Wyndham resident. Um, I'm also staff here um, and a youth leader at a local church. Um, this weekend is prom, so I hope, I know staff has been invited, that parents will share pictures and stories. Um, it's great to be have everything <coughs> the way it was um, pre-COVID. Um, I know the students are so super excited. Also, the art show, you guys have all been promoting the art show. It is a wonderful art show, so if you haven't gone down there to look at it yet, it is amazing. I'm hoping next year it's going to be even better as it used to be the largest student-led art show in the state of Maine. Yeah. So hopefully we can get there again. And our PTA, I just want to thank you guys, the board, for supporting our PTA as well um, because they put on an amazing luncheon for the staff at the high school today. Um, so shout out to all PTA members and some board support. Thank you. Thank you. My name is NJ Boatman, and I'm a transgender student at WHS. Good evening, board members. As I know you are aware, tonight you will be voting on whether or not to keep the book Gender Queer by Maya Kobabe in Wyndham High School. So I will be taking this opportunity to speak specifically about this book. Although the people trying to ban gender queer have repeatedly said that it isn't an attack on LGBTQ plus students, it doesn't change the effect that banning it would have. I do believe that some of these people genuinely think they are doing what is right and do have good intentions, but the intent of their actions is much different than the effect. It is not enough to have good intentions and the people that truly do have good intentions need to be listening to the ones who will actually be affected. The actual effect so far has been to increase the bullying and harassment of LGBTQ plus students at school. It was bad before this. Even then, there were very few days that I wouldn't be harassed or barked at in the hallways. But since this has started, the number of those days has decreased to zero. I walk through the halls and sit in my classes and half of what I hear is the same ignorant and hateful rhetoric that is so willfully being spewed at these meetings. The effect that banning this book will have would only be to take away yet another life-saving resource from already underprivileged LGBTQ students. Do books completely solve these students' problems? No. But unfortunately, the help and support that these kids need aren't readily available. Unfortunately, this book may be the only student a support for many students. Parents who do not want their children to read this book have the option of talking to the school or talking to their children. To take away this book would be a violation of free speech, an attack on LGBTQ plus students, and harmful to many, but helpful to none. I'm begging you, please do not give in to the hatred of this other side. Please do what is right and vote to keep gender queer in our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Courtney Edwards, Wendell, Maine. Uh, I wasn't able to attend last meeting, but fear not, since I've been gone, I've had the displeasure and aggravation of my continued search through your uncertain, treacherous sinkhole that seems never ending. Yesterday, finding an additional 10 books falling under trigger warnings for pedophilia, grooming, and child sexual abuse, including sexual assault and the rape of minors. Additionally, I found another book with a trigger warning to bestiality. When I first started vetting the online catalogs for inappropriate content, I can openly say that I was very heartsick, but I was also enraged, infuriated, and just plain pissed off. Now I am no longer shocked, I am just disgusted. Last meeting, I spoke of the power that a book has. Um, the scientific research, backed by credible sources, that the books are written to be stimulating, no matter what the genre, this isn't really a debate. Author's intent in writing is to take you to other places, other worlds, and feel emotions. So the fact that we have people coming up here saying that these passages and images aren't meant to be, aren't meant to stimulate, I'm sorry, but it's unintelligent, dense, and foolish. Even the last book that I read from about a brutal rape that left the victim covered in piss. We then had a woman stand up and say that the book should be kept because it helped her learn not to walk alone at night. No, I'm sorry, but that is, that is just called common sense. No one should need to read a book about an excruciating, cruel rape to learn that you shouldn't walk alone at night. That's foolish and it's unreasonable. And it's a, sorry, but it's just a ridiculous stance to keep such an inappropriate reading material for children to have access to. 
I also touched base last time I was here on the high school librarian along with her comments on I'm parent sorry, scope of no knowledge. No comment on personnel, please. I didn't mention any names. And that's in, well within my rights. Just be careful. The high school librarian um, and the scope of knowledge that she has based upon parents' abilities to give book reviews. This is absolutely insane. The book you're voting on tonight provides minors a secondary access to a pornographic website, you guys. That is not okay. It never would be. Like I said the first time I was here in this auditorium on March 1st, that there will come a day when these parents and concerned residents will definitely be able to say to you that you have indeed committed, committed a Class C felony, and it does serve up to five years in prison and up to a $5,000 fine. I don't take this lightly, and neither should any of you. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing no further comment. Uh, I'd like uh, Joe McIntyre Wyndham. I'd like to thank the school board for this opportunity to provide public comment regarding the book challenge. Folks have argued that we must allow parents to make decisions about their children's educations and that school libraries should not host pornography. I agree completely, which is why I ask you not to remove gender queer from the library. There is a system in place for parents to control the text their children can read. Asking the library not to allow their children to access gender queer might take a little effort, but sometimes parenting requires effort. It might not be as flamboyant as coming to the school board meetings to yell about a book, but the RSU 14 board does not have an interest in promoting virtue signaling, especially when doing so infringes on the rights of other parents and children. I agree, high school libraries should not have pornographic materials available for students. Fortunately, like Renaissance artwork, gender queer is not pornographic. Discussing sex, which genderqueer barely does in the first place, does not make a book pornographic. One hopes that high schoolers know what sex is. If not, their parents and their schools have both failed them. The idea that learning about sex is so traumatic that young minds have to be prevented from doing so until they turn 25 is so absurd it cannot be taken seriously. Genderqueer presents a non-binary character without focusing on extreme acts of bigotry or expressing a prurient interest in their sex life. Maya, the author and central character, is just a kid and young adult who loves reading and drawing and very slowly begins to make sense of Eric's experience of gender. It's a sweet story which lacks an easy resolution but is hopeful in its message. It's a positive narrative for people struggling with gender and a lesson in empathy for those who are not. Some speakers have said that they are concerned about pornography in the library, not the existence of a non-binary person in a book. These speakers have been sandwiched between others who have confused this book challenge with a referendum on whether trans and non-binary people exist. They do, the science is clear. What I find hard to understand is why people who are concerned with pornography but not non-binary gender identities would challenge a book which is not pornographic but does include a non-binary character. This suggests to me that at least some of the arguments about this book are being made in bad faith. If we care about parental rights and pornography, removing gender queer from the library is a solution in search of a problem. Far from expanding parental choices, it restricts them. It removes a book which is not pornographic while denying young people a useful perspective. The book must evaluate the quality of the arguments being put forward. A bad argument based on false premises does not become correct because the person making it is angry. Uh, yelling in a microphone does not make someone right. Throwing books on the floor and destroying public property does not make someone right. Implying that board members and school adults are groomers guilty of felonies does not make someone right. Casting aspersions on the students addressing the school board does not make someone right. When the only argument offered is based on untruths seasoned with a lack of self-control, that suggests that there is no rational case to be made. I hope the board will carefully consider the claims being advanced, examine their factual bases, and make a decision which best serves all students in the district, not just the community members who have the angriest voices. Thank you very much. Thank you. Kristen Day. First, I'd like to let everyone know that I got somewhat of an answer about the IJJ liability, board liability from the district. There seems to be concern over the legality of SAD6, Bonnie Eagles suspending their policy to tempor temporarily remove books for review. ICD board chair and Maine state representative, Nathan Carlo, said publicly their action was within their legal right and there's no 1A precedent set that addresses obscenity in language. There's been no lawsuit of this type 
and genderqueer has been removed from libraries all over the state and country. Chris, you said RSU 14 has not been threatened with legal action. However, legal liability has been raised by, has been raised by someone, all right. So last week, a student cited my public input and shared personal experience about it. I would like to say that my words were specific to the usual accusations of hate people looking to age censor book content here that distracts from solutions. Hate is not a motive in looking at book content no matter how much some people want to assign it to us. So it is my opinion that our concern is being misrepresented by the signs. I would never presume to know anyone's personal experience or make claims that hate doesn't exist. Although I will die on the hill that every student, every human faces struggles. Nobody's experience or emotional needs are a higher priority than others. And this is how schools should see every student in school. In other news, on Facebook, I had my first public defamation, including name calling and being 100% misquoted. Someone said they had a sign stolen from their yard and connected me, an apparently idiotic ringleader, to the event. They claimed I said nobody hates anyone, but that in stealing a sign is pretty hateful. This is the kind of guilt by association, knee-jerk reaction that fuels division. It would be like me responding by connecting them to the ed tech who last week defended depraved language at school and said it should therefore be in books just because they're on the same side. I wouldn't though because A, they're different people, and B, I would never assume anyone thinks what that ed tech said is okay. If someone stole someone's sign, I denounce it. Nothing to do with me or this side. We all care about kids, but I think we can do better. Anybody else? Oh, good evening, Ken Clark, Wyndham. Um, you know, again, the biggest takeaway I got from, you know, I, I can't thank Cordy Edwards enough for enlightening me on it, is that different people have a different takeaway when they read a book, period. We cannot rely on one person's interpretation. It's human nature to take away something different. It's just, it's a fact. Um, what I ask tonight is for the sake of students' mental health and literally their physical well-being, please remove genderqueer from our library. There is something called tough love that parents and adults must exercise on behalf of our children from time to time. And though it's tough right now, it will benefit them massively and pay massive dividends in the future. Teachers, librarians, administrators, students, and counselors within RSU 14 district are stepping way over the line by distributing porn pins, propaganda, asking others to be silent, inquiring about fellow classmates' sexuality and sexual experiences, and pushing themselves into the bathroom with peers of different genitalia. I honestly can't even believe I'm saying the words, as if it's, I can't believe they're true. But unfortunately, we're going down a, de a deteriorating road, and we gotta get back on the right, in the right lane and remove genderqueer and all other ill-guided books that somehow came crashing down into our library with no vetting or parental consent whatsoever. I was not impressed with the committee that uh, reviewed the books. It was librarians, teachers, principals, and I was looking forward to a well-educated, balanced opinion, philosophical deductive reasoning that supported both sides. I didn't hear it. As a matter of fact, when I heard someone ask, how did you weigh the negatives of the books, I heard crickets, nothing. And then they get up and tried to defend it. And honestly, I'm saying this out loud, it sounded like children trying to defend, defend how they didn't do their homework properly. And if that sounds insulting, I wanna say that I'm insulted. And so a lot of the parents here on this side who have been coming to these meetings for two years and we were not even asked to participate on that committee. We have a concern, not one of us were chosen. And if that doesn't show how biased that committee is, I don't know what does. At the end of the day, what can we say? No one is gonna agree on what books should be in the library. That, that's evident, it's just not gonna happen. Different interpretations, different views, this and everything. So what's the solution? Let's cut it off at the source. Let's get rid of the library. Let's get rid of it, honestly. We all agree that this information is accessible anywhere and everywhere, even worse information that, as we've heard. So let's say hundreds of thousands on infrastructure costs, we can roll the librarian salaries into the teachers, and we can save tens of thousands on library books, not have to buy them at all. We can set up media centers where there's a computer here, computer there, smaller room. Some people can have access with a card that let them go anywhere on the internet, and others can just have one that's a parental consent that they can go only this far on the internet. There are online libraries out there. I went online, found them. You download it, you flick through the page on your laptop, just like it's a book. <clears throat> 
It just makes sense. It's the source. And honestly, it, it, other schools are doing it. Just, just get rid of the library. It ends everything. And we can all come together finally and just say, you know what? We're all on an equal playing field now. We can have information where we want it, when we want it, and stop this divisionary stuff that is toxic, to Thank toxicating you, our com community. Anyone else? Hi, Lynn Butterfield Raymond. I'd like to start off by discussing what I heard last week about students talk talking inappropriately in the hallways and classrooms. Is there any disciplinary action happening there or is it just a free for all? The school should enforce appropriate behavior within the school so the students know when they are when they enter the school, they are held to a higher standard and they need to talk appropriately and not being used foul language. They need to respect people, whether it's other students or adults. It's common sense, common knowledge, common courtesy. I don't know where things changed over these years because I'm pretty sure when I was in high school, if we ever talked inappropriately or used foul language, we'd be sent to the principal's, principal's office pretty fast. I'm disappointed when I hear staff members state that some students are using sexual harassment language towards staff and students. When did this become acceptable behavior? How long has it been going on? Do you think disciplinary, disciplinary action should be put in place? Next up, bullying. Nothing seems to be rectified when bullying occurs. There needs to be something in place to discipline the bully and to help the student that's being bullied. I know firsthand nothing gets done. My kid has been bullied for three straight years by the same kids and nothing has ever been done about it. He's been called gay, even though he isn't, so many times I can't even count. He's been shoved, pushed, tripped, hit, kicked, whatever it is, nothing ever gets done. That is, until I told him to take care of it himself. One suspension later, problem solved. Bullying issues need to be fixed. Finally, I'm challenging the board to direct the superintendent to do a thorough review of the middle school and high school libraries, and that RSU 14 is in violation of policy IJJ and MDOE chapter 125, rule 5.04, which states, resources shall be appropriate to the ages of children served by the school. I'll repeat that. Resources shall be appropriate to the age of children served by the school. Jordan Small Middle School librarian had restructured her library during COVID to be grouped by genre. That way students could find books they were looking for without having to weed through books that were not interesting to that student. When I had that meeting there, Christine agreed and thought it was a great idea. Maybe our librarian, the other librarian should follow suit. Thank you. Anybody else? Scott T. McDonald, I'm from Wyndham, I'm a former student. Basically, people are saying it's against the LGBTQIA. It's not against the LGBTQIA. We want these books out of the library until they are reviewed. We do not want them we're not banning a book. We're trying to get it under, con under control because these books are not helping these students clearly. They do not do a darn thing for these kids. You, we're here week after week after week trying to get these books out, but no. You have Bonnie Eagle getting them out after one meeting of somebody going and asking, can you review these books? They do not come out uh, here. Why is that? It's pathetic and ironic that this, I'll say, liberal town cannot do something correctly. Another thing I want to bring up is how people want to address the board clearly, which you can address the board, but you cannot address the community. But when people get yelled at for freedom of speech, there's people on this board who are telling people, oh, you cannot be talking directly to ab about somebody. That's freedom of speech, the last time knew. And also, freedom of speech is not for a student, it's for adults. You need to learn how this happens, and history, which obviously is not being told, the Constitution, all this other stuff, it's not being told here, and these books need to get out because it's inappropriate for these kids to be learning. You don't need an 11-year-old kid up here reading a book because of something that was brought up and put on your bookshelf straight on there. They need to be told 
There needs to be a set rule that you cannot be showing these books. And also, there is a, on these books, on some of the books, there is a secondary link about pornography being pornography links. They cannot, they should not be exposed to a child because it's illegal. It clearly shows it on Google as everybody wants to go on Google and say, oh, Google says this. Get these darn books out of the school. I'm sure everybody who's a parent on this school board does not want their kid reading it from when they're in sixth grade to when they're in 12th grade. It's something they learn throughout life as an adult. Anybody else? Justin Wynott from Wyndham. The mental health is on the line of the students of this town. There could be countless students affected by the decision made here tonight. You guys are entrusted with the community and the children of the community to do the right thing. Gender Queer is a book that has pages with pornography in it. There are pictures of minors giving blowjobs. There is a link in the book to kink.com. Now, if you really want to do your research, click on that. Maybe that'll help make up your mind. It is time to do the right thing to stand up for these children and put them on a path where they can succeed. Thank you. Anyone else? Don Miller, Wyndham resident, mother of a middle schooler. Every meeting I attend, I hear the same concerns being voiced, and every meeting ends with the same result, which is the board does nothing to even try and rectify the situation at hand. There are several books at this point which have been deemed by many as containing inappropriate content, especially for middle schoolers who are aged 11 to 14. My daughter and I have had many conversations surrounding the issue. She's an avid reader and reads at a much higher grade level than the grade she's in. So finding appropriate content for her to read that keeps her engaged is hard enough. She's 12 and weeks ago, she said, the least they could do for the moment is label the books as containing sensitive or inappropriate content for some until they have all been reviewed. And then she continued with, and next year, why don't they send home some permission slips for the library with all the other paperwork that gets sent home during the first week. Parents can choose if their kids should have access to questionable material at the school library. This came from a 12 year old. A 12 year old who's scared to come to a meeting to tell you her big ideas because she's afraid of being bullied because the bullying does go both ways. You're sitting up there because you've been elected by the people of this community to serve on that board. You're tasked with being leaders. I know every single one of you sitting up there are intelligent individuals, but your chance to be innovators fell by the wayside when a book was challenged on January 23rd and we are just now on May 3rd making a decision and not a single thing has been done to ease the concerns of parents in the meantime. This could have been handled differently and should have been, but it was very clear after one of the meetings that you had instituted a policy, IJJ, and you had no idea what was actually in that policy and how to follow it. I should also know that I have a family member who's been on a school board in another district for over 20 years. They mentioned that policy, also IJJ, does not require them to seek legal advice when a book is challenged. In fact, their superintendent bought them each a copy of a book that was challenged they all, so they could all review it before a decision was made. They made a decision and not once did they consult their lawyer, which I would like to point out eats into school budget and taxpayer dollars big time. So while you have dug your heels in and hid behind a policy that apparently reads like a foreign language, these books have remained on the shelves for kids to stumble upon. I got to hear a few weeks ago how one of my daughter's friends picked up Flamer in the library, having no idea what the book was about or what was inside. She was was mortified when she flipped through those pages. It made her extremely uncomfortable. This isn't the first story I've heard about her peers picking up or checking out books that look like a nice fun read from the cover until they get into the pages and realize there are things in there they can't unsee. School libraries should be a safe space for everyone and right now that is not the case. Someone got up and spoke last week and basically said it's no big deal these books are accessible because say, kids say much worse in the halls and in class that does not make it okay. Do better. We should all want better for the children. That starts with leading by example. Our family dinner with my parents ended on Sunday with my daughter saying, I would just like to be able to go to the school library, pick up a book, and not have to worry about opening it up and seeing a wiener. She is 12. I don't think her ask is too big here. I think we've lost sight of the fact that these are children. They are minors, and it is our job to lead them in the right direction. We can all do better. Doing nothing is no Thank longer you. an option. Thank, Thank you. you. Anyone else? Uh, 
Hi, Jennifer White. Um, I sent an email to the board. I still have not received answers to some of the questions I had regarding the meeting last week. Um, I heard that the librarian that was on the IJJ committee was the one who brought the book Gender Queer into the school library, and I have not received a yay or an A on that, if that was true or not. I'm still waiting to hear. Um, it, I hope that's not true, because if it is true, that's very biased, and, and my opinion, should sh you should not have had that librarian on this committee. Um, also, I'd like to know what website was used when they did the book review summary and found that it was sound data inappropriate for minors for ages 12 and above. Um, to be honest, I mean, I just think back when I was in college and when I did research, we had to do, we had to really do our research. Anybody can go on to Google, go on to a book review website and look at book reviews. And if that's all this IJJ committee did, that's an embarrassment to this community. It's, it, it's really a disappointment. I'm gonna try not to get emotional, but we've had enough. I'm tired of being called names that we hate people. We don't hate people. We love our children. Is that a crime? That's not a crime. We want the best for this community. And you guys, it just seems like a lot of you are not, are not listening. We need to know that you're hearing us. When there is a porn website link on a book, it's wrong. It's wrong. I don't care. You cannot say it's right. It's not okay. And you can say, well, you know, you can opt your child out. No, that's not true. Maybe in theory. I, my daughter went to Raymond Middle School. She was a gifted, talented student. The librarian had book lists that were recommended for her to read, met with her. Oh, well, you know what? You're way above your grade level, and this is what the recommendations are. Let's go find these books for you. Very fortunately, we, we are involved, and we checked those books out. One had over 500 swear words in it, mostly the F word. She was in fifth or sixth grade. Is that okay? because my daughter's gifted and talented that she's given that kind of reading material? That's terrible. I'm sorry, it's terrible. I, just to even stand up here, that's just the beginning. I could go on and on, but I won't. Because her, some Thank of her teachers much. have been Your wonderful. Time conclude. I'm not Your speaking badly. Concluded. Yes. Your time is concluded. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you very much. Go ahead, shut my microphone off. That's why we get angry. It's disrespectful. Anyone else? How's it going, y'all? My name is Nolan Hansen, one of high school. The left is only concerned about one of these books. These parents are talking about many books, not just genderqueer. I don't see why they can't be removed from the school. No student should have these books pushed into their face. None of this is right. We need to do something about this. Anyone else? Hello everybody, I'm Stephen Napolitano from Wyndham. Uh, the Gender Queer book is available outside the school. Um, it does not prevent bullying. No, there are no case studies that the book saves lives. The book does not support the current school curriculum. And the book committee didn't mention the porn website that the book refers to. Why, why did they not mention that? I think that's a very important detail. They totally blew by that. I mean, have you asked yourself that question? They were appointed to go and look at this book in detail and give a report to you, and they failed to do that. That is very troubling to me. So what are the solutions are there? All right, so I've, I've been critical, Kate, of 
of you, particularly with the policy committee and the lack of urgency that I've seen since this book challenge came out in January. Um, and I wanted to see more urgency. And I know you've said, I'm not policy. I know you're not policy. You are the person that controls the agenda on this board. And you can put on the agenda to have a discussion. We really don't know a lot about what the board members' opinions are. Um, it's, it's kind of, they've all been kind of held back. Um, and that's why I've been critical, because I haven't seen the urgency. This is serious stuff, and we do love our children. So I'd like to hear more solutions. I have not hear, heard many solutions at all. Actually, none. You know, so we're just pushing this right through. So it takes what started January, now we're in May. So if we, if we challenge 200 books uh, with the current IJJ process, and there are a lot of books in this school that need to be challenged, we're talking 83 years. So you might as well put that on the new, <laughs> you put that on the new um, job description for people that join the school board, because it's gonna be like this forever, as long as you have those books in this school. Uh, so we're, it's time to vote on book number one. Will you choose, will you choose to protect all children and clean up the library, starting with book one, or are you gonna choose team politics? and overlook what is really happening here. The book has pornographic images. So you need to decide what you wanna put your name and face on. Do you wanna choose safety, or do you wanna choose that you're pushing porn? Thank you. My name is Frank Emery, I'm from Raymond. Yesterday I was in Augusta, as well as hundreds of folks that were there to show support for defeating an abortion bill. I know there's a bunch of folks here that were there yesterday. There were about 2,200 people there that were protesting against stuff that's wrong. Today I'm here in support of getting rid of some of the books that are in the library. I know a good bit of my tax money goes to the school budget, and I'm sad to know that you choose to use some of it to purchase books that can do serious harm to students. We hear these books are helpful to some, but if a student checks one out, takes it home, will it be safe from younger siblings? Is little Ricky gonna find it after seeing some of those so-called helpful things, invite his neighbor Timmy over for some PBR, they don't drink Bud Light anymore, <laughs> but they have a group walk while the folks are away. So yesterday, was to save the unborn, and today I'm here trying to save the innocent. The innocent. The facts are clear. Suicide is almost three times higher for these children than in other teens. Do you want to take the chance? Do your job, protect our kids, get the books that might help them to learn, like history, or reading, or economics. Get rid of these stupid books. Anybody else wish to speak? I don't see any move. Okay. Good evening. I'm Jean Fisk, Wyndham. The last two times I spoke, I mentioned my personal experience working with individuals who held degrees of higher education. These individuals, regardless, can function adequately or inadequately. What really matters is not what degree the person has earned, but rather the degree of common sense. As school board members, what power do you have to address the concerns of the parents and more importantly, the welfare of our children? Obviously, you must see the dangers of keeping these harmful books in our schools and exposing innocent minds to them. If you are unable to help our students for the better, then why remain on the school board? What beneficial purpose do you even have? A few of the junior high students who have spoken in favor of the books said the books help them. How? How can they? No, it's more about popularity and the new unhealthy culture our society is being exposed to today. So school board, 
if your hands are tied and you do not have the courage to speak and speak out for the benefit of our students, then what is the reason for remaining on the board? I'd like to add, all three of my children graduated from Wyndham High School. And because the way education is managed today, all three of my children are homeschooling their children. I'd like to challenge the Wyndham School Board to dare to make a difference and please dare to be different. Any final public comment? Adam Zajac, Wyndham. Um, you know, four months ago I was here standing up, speaking out about genderqueer. And I kept saying, it takes four months to pull a book out of here. And Kate, you kept disagreeing and saying, no, it doesn't take four months. Look at where we are four months later. Right now, we're arguing this book still. I wish you could take this much time to get books into the library as long as it takes to get these books out. So you guys are really showing us how terribly state and federal programs work in this country. I, I, I can't even imagine that we're still up here right now debating this. There's going to be a reckoning here soon and you can either be on the right side of this history that's coming or you can be on the wrong side and right now you guys are really on the wrong side of it it's clear that the people don't want this the majority don't want this woke ideology happening and you guys are still pushing it look at what happened to budweiser look at what happened to nike all these corporations that are failing right now because of what they're standing for you guys need to wake up Anyone else? Hey guys, I'm Ewan O'Shea and I'm the Neurodivergent Nightmare. I'm a freshman at Wyndham High School and I come up here with my PhD in being a disappointment to say that you guys are obviously in a position where you know what you're talking about. You all have worked a lot to get, to get to the, into these places and I respect you for that. I trust that you know what you're doing because chances are none of us know or none of us here know fully about whatever is being discussed here. There is always a piece of context or information that cannot be given, have it be through confidentiality or other means, and it is no place for me to try and pretend that I fully know about what I'm talking about because I absolutely do not know everything. So for that, I hope you guys keep up the good work. However, I would like to get one thing straight, at least from my perspective. Do not, under any circumstances, do anything to students like me for their well-being. The only person I feel comfortable accepting this type of stuff from is from my own mother, and I can and will refuse it from others without hesitation. The people trying to do this are from a different generation. They were raised in a different time. They have different values. Things that may have helped them may not work for us. Obviously, this is not entirely true. Many things still hold up over the course of a few decades, but getting rid of some books is not one of them. I do not care. We are not as affected by this as much as people may think we do. Stop trying to make it out like it is. You do not know who I really am or what, or what I really want because people like me are much too scared to tell any of you. Any further public comment? I'm Christine Emery from Raymond. Uh, those of you who support leaving these books in the school library are leading children down a very dark path. One common thread that I hear mentioned among the students who speak up here is thoughts of suicide. I remember years ago, a group of us received permission to walk through the halls of this very school and pray because a young student had committed suicide. 
The lockers were covered with very sad words expressed by so many of his fellow students. I'll never forget that experience. Obviously, the students were all affected by this tragedy. The students here today need counselors who are equipped to help them. And if these books in question really do help them, then let a counselor decide and let the counselor hand, hand the book out as opposed to having them available to all. The students who are at risk deserve the best help they can get. If you really value them, you can show them by placing the right trained professional counselors here. The consequences of not taking this action will be extremely detrimental to the students who are at risk. Thank you. Hi, my name is Danny Davis and I'm a Wyndham resident. And I object to the school's gender-related counseling for minors. These are ideologies and they're dangerous for children. They alienate parents from their children. And I also object to the school's social emotional <clears throat> learning curriculum while it involves critical race theory and gender theory. This part of SEL removes the ability for parents to parent their children when and how they feel is best and through their family morals and values. This part of SEL removes the innocence from our youth. This book is all part of it. Kids need respect, boundaries, accountability, confidence, knowledge, standards, discipline, goals, and reality. From what I'm hearing from the million parent chats I'm involved in, parents and also teachers both feel like the kids are running the show. And a lot of these things that they need have been thrown out the window. Children are being treated like adults and adults like children. I can confident, confidently tell you that a small group that wants to keep these books and gender theory in our schools. Parents, business owners, employees, teachers, and students who also object, object to having this are afraid to speak up as they know they will be targeted, silenced, and even worse, they fear they could be fired. We need to replace a few of the seats on the board that are available this year. They are the boss of the superintendent, which also needs to be replaced. We need to revise policies and curriculum. We need to bring back parent transparency and involvement. And as you can see with our current leaders, they don't care about these things. Money or something else means more to them. If we, do, if we don't stop and we keep growing our efforts and awareness, we will make a positive difference. School's coming to an end, but we need to make a difference starting with the school board elections this year. At this point, the false accusations and labels are laughable and bother me none. And my friends, myself, and my family know who I am, why, and how I'm doing this. So label me, I don't care. I'm confident, I'm comfortable, and I'm proud of what I'm doing for our kids. And I also want to mention one more time, let's not forget about this book, directing you to kink.com, a hardcore porn website. Thank you. Any further comment? I don't see any movement, so I'm closing public comment. Thank you. We're gonna, you, I'm sorry, you've already. I'm sorry, your time is up. We're moving on. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, you should definitely take her information. I'd love for her to send me the information. Um, we're going to move into item eight, superintendent's report. 